Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah amma ba'd. Inshallah today we get into the concept of ghina, of self-sufficiency. And in Muqayyir Rahmatullah begins the conversation with something very beautiful. So really pay attention to this. He says, وَلَمَّا كَانَ الْفَقْرُ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ هُوَ عَيْنُ الْغِنَى بِهِ فَأَفْقَرُ النَّاسِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَغْنَاهُمْ بِهِ وَأَذَلُّهُمْ لَهُ أَعَزُّهُمْ وَأَضْعَفُهُمْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ أَقْوَاهُمْ وَأَجْهَلُهُمْ عِنْدَ نَفْسِهِ أَعْلَمُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَأَمْقَتُهُمْ لِنَفْسِهِ أَقْرَبُهُمْ إِلَى مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ كَانَ ذِكْرُ الْغِنَى بِاللَّهِ مَعَ الْفَقْرِ إِلَيْهِ مُتَلَازِمَيْنِ مُتَنَاسِبَيْنِ فَنَذْكُرُ فَصْلًا إِلَى آخِرِ to do my best to translate this here, he says, once we realize that needing Allah is the essence of being self-sufficient through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we realize we need Allah, then naturally the more we're going to pursue Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When, when I realize that there are a trillion things around me that can potentially harm me and the ones I love, whether that's people, whether that's the economy, whether that's weather, viruses, whatever it is. Right? If you really think about how many threats are around us, it, it really scares the individual. Hence, you have so much anxiety these days. When we realize our need and that Allah can protect us from all of this, naturally, we're going to seek protection from Him. So the more we realize our need, our vulnerability, the, and the more we will pursue Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we do that, we become self-sufficient through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of our relationship with Allah. So when we realize that need of Allah is the essence of self-sufficiency, then we begin to realize that the people who most live by that need for Allah are the most self-sufficient people. The more a person lives by this reality that I need Allah, then the more Allah will provide them, making them self-sufficient. That is the reality of the human being. Um, also, the more humility a person behaves with in their relationship with Allah, uh, then the more izzah, the more dignity Allah gives that person. So through humbleness, for the sake of Allah, Allah makes us Azizin gives us that dignity and that strength. Hence the hadith. Right? Whoever behaves humbly for the sake of Allah, Allah raises them. And the one who feels this weakness, uh, this vulnerability when they stand in front of Allah, they're the strongest people. Why? Because that vulnerability, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will supplement it, will reward that vulnerability by giving that person strength. So notice kind of the opposite. When, when you feel that need, human beings, they don't want to feel that. Right? We, we, the, the thing we do most is, how can I make sure I'm financially secure, my kids are financially secure, I have my own home so I don't hear anyone around me, I have the privacy. All of our kind of worldly pursuits revolves around not needing anyone else. That's how we human beings are. That's part of our dignity. And so Islam comes and says, but you need Allah. We don't want to feel that. You need to be humble in front of Allah. We don't want to feel that. We need to feel weak in front of Allah. We don't want to feel weakness. So we're going against kind of our inner selves, our nature, when we behave these ways. And so Allah rewards it by giving us the things that we really want. That strength, that dignity, self-sufficiency. وَأَجْهَلُهُمْ عِنْدَ نَفْسِهِ The one who realizes how much, how little they know about themselves. It's this, this mission that really I, I don't know what is best for me. I don't know what is real guidance for me. I don't know how to really take care of myself. And thus I need Allah, Al-Alim, the All-Knowing, to take care of that for me. So the more we <coughs> acknowledge this, this ignorance of the self and the ignorance of, of my desires, then the more we get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of His knowledge and how He can protect us. And the one who despises the self more are closer to the, the riba of Allah, Allah's pleasure. Despise here, I don't mean in the mental health term. There is a, 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 an illness that can result from despising oneself. 
being discontent with oneself. That's not what I'm talking about. But makt of the self, despising oneself in terms of one's inconsistencies, shortcomings, in terms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rights. That I do this, I do that, but I just, it, it's not enough. I always feel the insincerity. I always feel like what I do for the sake of Allah is not enough. It's not the best quality. This is what we're talking about here, that I wish I was better. Look at all these prophets and all these companions who have come and gone, and I, can, I compare myself to them, and who am I? I'm really just a nobody. This is the type of uh, disliking, discontentment of the self that we're talking about here. When a person feels that, then they are closer to the pleasure of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and so, when you think about need of Allah, and Allah being al-ghani, right, self-sufficient, these two are intertwined. They're intertwined by default. You cannot benefit from Allah's lina until you live by your faqir, that need for Allah. And when you feel that need for Allah, then you have opened the doors of Allah's lina, right? His self-sufficiency. So, so very beautiful when it comes to the dynamics of our relationship with Allah and Allah's relationship with us. Allah created us in a way where we are, where we are vulnerable. We are very vulnerable. But He supplements that, he offsets it with his lina. And so our, the thing that we dislike most about being a human being, that vulnerability, I mean, Iblis was able to deceive Adam and, and our mother, Hawa. How? Right. Why, did, why did Allah tell you not to eat from the, the tree? Oh, maybe if you eat from the tree, you'll become an angel or you'll become uh, eternal. I mean, look at it. Becoming an angel, what does that mean? What is, he, what is it he's trying to attract them to? To being better. To being better. Yeah. If you, I guarantee you, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and these guys, you think they're sitting there, man, alhamdulillah, I just, I'm, I'm good, I'm set. Or they're sitting thinking how I can become better. That's how we human beings are. We're always, we're so attracted to becoming better. And that's good. But it's also a double-edged sword. It can be bad. Or you'll be permanent, you'll be eternal. We're always afraid of losing. So we have this reality of the inner self, of being a human being. Uh, and there's that need. And so Allah offsets it with ghina. But the person who feels self-sufficient because of themselves, that they lose that ghina from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْغِنَ عَلَى الْحَقِيقَةِ لَا يَكُونُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ الْغَنِي بِذَاتِهِ and then Ibn Qayyim Rahmatullah gives us another very important concept when it comes to this idea of ghina, Allah subhanahu wa being al-ghani. He says that know and be certain that no one can describe themselves as ghani except Allah. No one can. And he goes into a lot of detail here, and I'll try and um, uh, summarize it the best I can. No one can describe themselves as ghani except Allah. Well, why? Well, what is self-sufficiency? When I ask you all, what does it mean to be self-sufficient? Let's say from a, say from a financial point of view. When are you financially self-sufficient? You have a home. Means of transportation. Means of transportation, okay. Food, income, all of this stuff. Your savings. Your savings, etc. Your family. To put it differently, to put it from a financial point of view, if you were to stop working now, how much money will you have and how much money will you be making? If you just stop right now, you stop a job. That, that's what it means to be, fi what your financial situation is. Mm -hmm. And so, um, being self-sufficient financially requires a lot of external things. Money, car, home, maybe people, food, etc. All of these are external to me. But if I were to stop right now and I have nothing, am I self-sufficient? No. no. Well, you can depend on, you can this is uh, you depend on, on that's one with Allah that He will approve. Before we get to the theological stuff, right? I'm just giving a picture here. If I stop now and I'm left with nothing, Am I self-sufficient? No, no, no. So not in a worldly sense. Yeah. Not in a worldly sense. Not at all. Why? Because we human beings, me as a human being, I, I am not self-sufficient by merit of being a human being. 
my self-sufficiency comes from external things. And this is the reality of every single person. Every single person. Let's take it from intellectually, knowledge. You need a fatwa. Now, me personally, I've studied. Maybe I can author my own fatwa. Or I can go to the books to get the fatwa. But the knowledge that I have in my mind, did I conjure up that knowledge through my own brain? No. No. I gathered information and then I stored it, or Allah stored it in my mind. Right? But the idea is, what I need to give a fatwa to myself did not come from myself. It came from external things. Mm -hmm. Take, for example, the verse, وَمَن لَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُورًا فَمَا لَهُ مِن نور. Whoever Allah doesn't make light for them, then they have no light. The eye can see what causes the eye to see. Hmm? What is it necessary for the eye to see? You have to have uh, everything, the cornea and all the no, all see, parts see. of the eye. If I were to turn off the lights right now, light. what happens? We can, in this room, we can still see. It's not be, you get the point, right? Yeah, yeah, it's completely yeah, philosophical. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that there are no windows, absolutely no way for light to come in. I turn off the lights, what's going to happen? You, you can't see, mm -hmm. even though your eyes function. Nothing wrong with your eyes. Our ability to see comes from something external. Our eyes cannot generate sight. It needs something external. Same thing with the ears, same thing with tasting, same thing with the mind. It requires external things. So we human beings, if we have the external realities that make us self-sufficient, then so be it. But we as human beings, we are not self-sufficient in of ourselves. We always depend on other things. And that's, that is true, that is a fact for every single created being. The only one who is self-sufficient in of himself is Allah. And so if there is absolutely nothing other than Him, Allah is still Allah. It does not reduce from His perfection a, son, like a centimeter, a millimeter, a decimeter, nothing. As the hadith says, كان الله ولم يكن شيء معه. Allah was, and there was nothing with Him. So there's some point in reality, I can't even use the word time because it's so complex, there was some point where it was only Allah. And at that point, Allah was equally perfect to Himself today. Why? Because He in of Himself is self-sufficient. He is Al-Ghani. He does not depend on anything else. And since He doesn't depend on anything else, everything else depends on Him. Nothing came to existence except through Him. Existence cannot maintain itself except through Allah. And so Allah says, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds the heavens and the earth together from falling apart. It is Allah who holds it together. And if it begins to fall apart, who can bring it back together other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Allah is, He is the only one who is truly self-sufficient. Why? Because He is self-sufficient by merit of Himself. Subhanahu. Everyone else who enjoys an amount of self-sufficiency is coming from something external. Mm -hmm. Now tie it back to the four names of Allah. Al-awwal wal-akhir wa wal batin The first, the last, the uh, apparent, and the near. If I have something that makes me self-sufficient, then by merit of Allah's name, al-awwal, the first, that came from Allah. And so it's not water that's making me self-sufficient. Rather, it is Allah who created the water and brought it to me that is making me self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Allah does not need water, we need water. Whether I drink water or not does not change from Allah's perfection. Rather, I'm the one who needs that external reality to bring this water to me. Or else, I'm done for. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who is self-sufficient by merit of himself. Everything else depends on something else in order to acquire that self-sufficiency. Um, 
وَكُلُّ مَا سِوَاهُ مَوْسُومٌ بِسِمَةِ الْفَقْرِ And if everything else depends on external realities, then me, myself, I am in need. If I cannot conjure up in of myself food to sustain me, I am in need. If I cannot conjure up water, I am in need. If I cannot see but on my own, I am in need. I am in need of light, I am in need of water, I am in need of food, I am in need of companionship, I am in need of children, I am in need of health. I, whatever it is, there's a, an infinite list of our needs. This is a reality, no one can deny this. Where Islam comes in and gives it a unique uh, perception or a unique angle is that all of these created things come from Allah. And so we, I am not in need of money. I am not in need of food. I am not in need of water. I am in need of the one who creates all of these things and the one who brings it to me. So my true need is to Allah. Whether I admit it or not, my reality is telling me I need an external, uh, I need external support. For the Muslim, that's Allah. For other people, it's whatever it is. It's money, it's a spouse, it's children, it's, it's whatever it is. So, this is the reality of self-sufficiency. And then Ibn Qayyim Rahmatullah says that we can categorize self-sufficiency in two, two primary categories. One, ghina safil, lower or lesser self-sufficiency, ghina alim, and higher self-sufficiency. Well, what's the difference? Uh, the lower self-sufficiency is the need for things that maintain our physical bodies, our worldly realities. Any human being needs a companion. A human being cannot survive on their own, like literally isolated from greater society. We, we were not created that way. A man needs a woman, and a woman needs a man. I need children, children need their parents. It's the reality of being a human being or, or the reality of the world. And this reality is accepted by all human beings. We all accept it. Muslim, non-Muslim, atheist, we all accept this reality that I am in need, the human being needs other things. And so for this reason, it's lesser. It doesn't differenti differentiate between the believer and the disbeliever. It doesn't differentiate between a wali of Allah or an average believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because this is the, the truth. The higher ghina is when the person acknowledges that it is Allah who really provides me with these things. And so I attribute these realities to Allah, these blessings to Allah, and I respond to it by submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what differentiates Muslim from non-Muslim, a, a wali of Allah from you know, an average uh, common Muslim. So that's uh, the higher ghina. So what we want to work on is this higher ghina. How do I better realize my need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the worldly realities, through what I have and what I already enjoy. If I can do that, then naturally I will begin to see my need. So again, the, the very beautiful dynamic. The more I realize my need, how vulnerable I am, then the more uh, I will pursue something to supplement that or to protect that vulnerability. Also, conversely, the more I realize Allah's ghina, the more in need I feel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I realize this water is from Allah, and this technology is from Allah, this book is from Allah, this phone is from Allah, you know, one way or another, and okay, well, I'm, I'm literally surrounded by things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there's no escaping that. Well, what if Allah takes this? What if Allah takes that? What if this is damaged? What, what then? So the more I realize Allah's ghina, the more I feel the need. Or we can say, the more I realize Allah's ghina, the more, the more I want. Man, Allah has all of this. I want more of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can provide me. And that makes me feel the need, more need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> And some of the early uh, Muslims said, إِذَا اجْتَمَعَ إِبْلِيسُ وَجُنُودُهُ لَمْ يَفْرَحُوا بِشَيْءٍ كَفَرَحِهِمْ بِثَلَاثَةِ أَشْيَاءِ مُؤْمِنٍ مُؤْمِنٍ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا وَرَجُلٍ يَمُوتُ عَلَى الْكُفْرِ وَقَلْبٍ 
fihi khawful faqr. They said that when Iblis gathers with his armies, the things that, they, that makes them most happy, there are three things that makes them most happy. One, a believer who kills another believer. Yeah. I'm sure they're celebrating day in, day out these days. The second is when a person dies as a disbeliever. And the third is when the heart of the human being feel, fears poverty. When the human being fears mm. poverty. They love that. Because you're not depending on Allah. So many verses in the Quran come and say, In the sky is your rizq. Allah sends it down. So many, many verses, Allah points that you know, we're, the thing that distracts us most from Allah is worldly pursuits, money. It's, it's a, we understand why, but it is the reality that it distracts us from Allah. This fear of losing, this fear of poverty, it, it puts the human being in a certain psychological state where it, it, it erodes their relationship with Allah, intentionally or unintentionally, most times unintentional. But the thing that kills Iman, that erodes it, that weakens it, that you find consistently being spoken about in the Quran is love of this life, wanting more. And one of the ways Iblis captures the individual and imprisons them in this worldly prison is by coming and telling the person you know you had to be afraid what about tomorrow what's going to happen we I mean, look at insurance companies it's literally builds fear based on industry yeah. making you afraid yeah. of what can happen in the future mm-hmm. now that doesn't make it haram that's a different conversation but the idea is what are you going to do if you die tomorrow? Have life, life insurance. Yeah. What are you going to do if you get in an accident? Have car insurance. What do you do if you get sick tomorrow? Yeah. Have yeah. medical yeah. insurance. Again, I'm not saying it's haram. We understand why we need to do it. But the idea is, if I can get you afraid of these things, you're going to behave in a certain way. If Iblis can get us to fear poverty, mm-hmm. then he can get us to behave in a certain way. At least distract us. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so the more we acknowledge Allah's ghina, He is the self-sufficient. Uh, it doesn't make us ascetic in where, okay, I'm just not going to pursue worldly things. No, that's laziness. That's, that's lack of ambition. But at least when we pursue, we pursue with, with optimism. We don't pursue out of fear and anxiety. These are two different realities. Someone who is passionate, I want my company to grow just because I want to accomplish something. It's a very different mindset than someone who's saying, I got to grow my company because I'm afraid uh, I'm going to go broke tomorrow. And Lina has two sides to it. Faqrin, faqr qalb, faqr, I'm sorry, faqr qablihi, qablahu wa faqr ba'dahu. So, ghina, self-sufficiency, is surrounded by faqir, need of Allah. So, in order to really open the doors of this name of Allah, al-ghani, we have to acknowledge our need. When we do that, we open the door, we enter upon Allah as al-ghani. And when we realize those realities, we exit that door into another state of Faqir, need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, the dynamic is very intertwined. It builds on itself. Oh my God, I'm vulnerable. I need something. I need someone to protect me from my vulnerabilities. Allah. Let me go upon Allah. Oh Allah this, Allah that, Allah this, Allah that. Then Allah provides. And then you see how Allah has provided you with the things that keep you safe. Well, I need Allah to keep give me these things. I need Allah to maintain these things for me, and then you get into another state of need of Allah, and that opens the door. You see how it is? So it builds on itself. This is, the, this is a very common, uh, a very common reality of iman. Allah has made it in a way where things build on itself. You enter upon one thing, Allah gives you something else, and that gives you something else, and it keeps building. This is part of Allah's mercy to make it easy for us to build iman. 
So for example, we recite Surah Al-Fatiha in every single rak'ah. Well, why? Well, you're asking Allah to guide you. <inaudible> God is on the straight path. Well, if the person is not on the straight path, well, they're making dua for themselves. If a person is on the straight path, then essentially you're saying, allow me to stay on the straight path. And if the person is so rooted in Iman, then it's as though they are saying, Allah, increase me on you know, this, this state of being on the straight path. It builds on itself. So you make your dua for yourself, Allah responds. You get into another level, you make the same dua for yourself, Allah gives you more and it builds, builds, builds upon itself. Uh, the same thing about faqr. You feel the need, you get Allah's ghidah. Allah blesses you with that, you feel more need, Allah gives you more, you feel more need, Allah gives you more, and it just builds, builds, builds. It's like, you know, all these people take a like, compound interest to take advantage of you. Allah gives you compound hasanat, compound on uh, blessings from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, this is uh, going back to the, the lesser uh, self-sufficiency and the greater self-sufficiency. We said the lesser self-sufficiency is something that all human beings live by. There's, there's nothing unique about it, but it's the higher one that we really want, we're really interested in. And now we're going to dive a little bit more into this, the, the meaning of the higher, um, higher uh, self-sufficiency. And there are three ways of looking at it. The first way, the first level is غنى القلب, when the heart becomes self-sufficient. What does that mean? هُوَ سَلَامَتُهُ مِنَ السَّبَبِ وَمُسَلَامَتُهُ لِلْحُكُمْ وَخَلَاصُهُ مِنَ الْخُصُومَ The heart becomes self-sufficient when it, it's no longer attached to the means of acquiring things. I need water. I know that this water is in the office, in the refrigerator. I got two legs. I could go and get it. That's the means of acquiring this. And of course, that's something that we have to do. I cannot sit here and say, Oh Allah, bring that water to me. Oh Allah, bring that water to me. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. I will be sitting day in, day out. It's never going to come to me. Why not? Because that's not how Allah created the universe. The hikmah is that you go get up and get your water. The question is, and we've gone over this before, when I go and get the water, what is my heart attached to? My, my, the water? My ability to get the water? Or Allah? This is the difference. It's not about sitting, okay, I have to change the way I, I acquire water. From a person who goes and gets up and gets water to a person who says, Ya Allah, give me water. Ya Allah, give me water. It's not changing that. It's not what we're doing. I mean, it's still get up and get water. But the difference is when I'm on my way to get water, where's my mind? Where's my heart? Is it saying, oh man, I, I'm glad I have legs to go and get up, get up and get water? Nothing wrong with that. Oh yeah, I'm glad that the office is competent and there's always water around. I'm glad you know uh, Abu Sama has brought up water for for me. Nothing wrong with that. Or is my mind saying, Allah is the one who provided me with these legs and all of these things, and so my heart is attached to Allah while I do this thing. My heart is dependent on Allah. Oh Allah, you put all these people in this world. You know how many people were involved in the making of this one water bottle? How many? Quite a few. Yeah. Uh, quite a few, a few dozen. How many years of technological development? If you want to add that. Now we're looking at about a few thousand people. Just to get this to me. Mm -hmm. Imagine, oh Allah, if one of those people weren't there. And I have no control over this. So I depend on Allah to maintain these things. And what if uh, Abu Sama can no longer work? May Allah give him, you know... Uh, strong health and everything. And then, okay, well, who, who's going to be replaced? Who's going to come up and do this? What if you know, Costco, no, no longer is Costco, <laughs> what are we going to do then? Mm -hmm. The idea is it's a scary world. Things are up and down. I mean, have you ever thought, where would, where would you go if America collapsed? And I know, I know those from Pakistan. You have a decent alternative, right? No, not no, not anymore. Not anymore? It's, like it's, so bad, survive. Survive. it's bad now? Like it's will bad. not be able to survive. Forget mm -hmm. the country. They won't be able yeah. to survive. But then the relatives, we are from a different planet. <laughs> yeah. But have you ever thought of that? Where would we go? I, I think As a Middle Easterner, <laughs> where am I going to go? There, there is no alternative. 
you think about it logically, the better to do Middle Eastern countries, they're not going to welcome us. Clearly, as the Arab Spring has shown us, when we go back to Jordan, well, they have their own problems. Way worse. Where can I go? It's a very scary thought. Until you sit and you think, well, I'll leave that to Allah. Allah didn't create, create me to worry about these things. But rather says, I will take care of you. Yes, we should do what we can in order to secure for us you know, a, a future just in case. If you have extra money, by all means, do buy yourself, do buy yourself a home, if, if, it's, if it's even legal. But do buy yourself a home in, in Dubai or in the Emirates or, or another good, decent country. Do, please do do that. But the idea is, it's a scary world. And so, if our heart is attached to the world and to the means, you have anxiety. And that's the reality of our times today. All these young ones are always afraid of everything. Even adults, they're afraid. There's anxiety. I'm scared. What about this? What about that? Everything's fear, fear, fear. Why? Because the heart is attached to the creation. And here, if you want to become self-sufficient through Allah, through Al-Ghani, then the heart needs to become self-sufficient. And the heart begins to become self-sufficient by detaching itself from the means and attaching itself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the story of the children of Israel when Musa salam, told his people, enter upon uh, the blessed land. And his people said, yep, yeah, no way. We're not doing that. There is a scary, strong people in there. No, no, we, we won't enter until they leave. And then you had two individuals who Allah prays and says, these are people who have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did these two people tell their, their, um, their, their fellow tribes, their fellow religious people? They said, enter upon the door. And if you do, you will be victorious. Put your trust in Allah. So we plot, and we, I mean, we plan, we, we, we try and be smart, but there will always come a point where, look, it is what it is. I cannot change these realities. All I can do is enter upon the door and put my trust in Allah. You do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of the rest. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying there are tears aren't going to be shed. I'm not saying that you're not going to have difficult days where you, your, your hair feels like it's going gray in the moment because of the stress. But the idea is, if the heart puts its trust in Allah, then it helps to reduce that anxiety. It helps to keep us moving forward. But if we are uh, tied to the asbab, to the means, like these children of Israel, they're looking like, what the, how can we overpower these people? We're fighting them on their turf, and they're clearly a, a more equipped army than us. And you want us to enter? They said, اِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَ They told Musa, I mean, straight up, Musa, you and your Lord go. You go fight and, you know, we'll be sitting here. Why? Because they were attached to the means. And so their hearts didn't enjoy that ghina through Allah. Contrary to those two individuals who said, this is the command, this is what our Prophet is telling us, enter, you will be victorious. And put your trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, the, sal, the ghina of the heart it begins by detaching itself from the means and attaching itself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of that, we add, وَمُسَالَمَتُهُ hukum, And submitting to Allah's adjudication. Now this tends to mean in the, the realm of spirituality, Allah's, Allah's qadam. Things are going to happen out of, our, out, of our, out of our control. And there's a very well-known um, scholar in, the, in, the, in Egypt who, whose wife passed away just a few days ago. A young gentleman, uh, and basically he's putting the information out now. Uh, the, her, his wife went in for a very simple procedure. And the anesthesiologist, anesthesia, anesthesia, an, anesthesiologist, anesthetist, I think. No, anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologist yeah. started the process of putting her asleep, and dude just went out and had a cup of coffee and, and smoked a cigarette. Just left her. And, uh, and uh, I guess one of the pieces, the oxygen, fell out of place. Yeah. 
and she wasn't getting oxygen, she died. Oh my God. Of course, they're suing, and now it's being taken to court. But damage is done. Yeah. That this is the qadr of Allah. Yeah. It hurts. I know. It hurts, but it is the qadr. Period. Now, obviously, not to compare, but last year, um, my wife was in Turkey, and the itinerary was for her. Uh, to come to Chicago, I'm going to meet her there. I uh, would spend a week in Chicago and whatnot. Now, when I reserved the tickets several months prior, they gave me a time, right? There was an itinerary. And I took a screenshot. And then the two days later, Turkish Airlines contacts, sends an email, says the time has changed for the return flight. Right? So, okay, nothing wrong with that. I forgot to take a screenshot of the time change. Yeah. So when it was time for her flight, I told her, this is when your flight is, etc. She goes to the airport. Where's the flight? Where's the flight? Of course, no one there speaks English. Mm -hmm. And they're the least helpful people in the world. Right? Uh, hopefully I don't get in trouble for saying that. Uh, where's the flight? Where's the flight? Where's the flight? Your flight has already left. What do you mean already left? Call the Turkish airline, uh, call the company and whatnot. No, no. We sent you a, a confirmation. You confirmed the time change and whatnot. And I'm sitting there thinking, why didn't I check the day before? All I had to do was put the, the uh, flight number. That's it. Why don't I go on my app, which I reserve the tickets on, and look? All it takes is a few seconds. Did she find out what happened? Like... Yeah, she knows what happened. And I, yeah, I'm saying, you see the regret? Yeah. And now all the, 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 the mess and... The, it was just a mess. The baby was with her? It was with her. Yeah. But alhamdulillah, she was with her family, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. But the idea is, the feeling, like, why didn't I do it? Mm -hmm. But in this Egyptian uh, scholar's case, mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't do anything. It was uh, the... Oh, I, 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 I'm not comparing. Yeah. The idea is, we go through situations where you sit and you regret. Mm -hmm. Why, why, why? Well, what, this, what we're being taught here is, if you want your heart to be self-sufficient, then you have to submit to Allah's qadr. Stuff happens. To it's going to happen. Right? And sometimes the qadr is, leads to a person's death. It is what it is. Yeah, Americans call it move on. What is it? <laughs> I mean, over here they say just move on. Just yeah. move on. Okay. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's still like... Uh, it's Allah's so qadr. Yeah, they're suing. They're, 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 they're taking it to court. Egypt yeah. too? Yeah, yeah, there are really? courts there, right? as, bad, as bad as it is. If you sue somebody, you just bribe and you know somebody and halas. Yeah, but this is a pretty well-known individual, so I'm sure he's going to have a lot of support. And a lot of pressure is going to be on uh, the courts. Uh, anyway, it's a different story. But the idea is, in order for the heart to become self-sufficient, it needs to accept the reality that things are going to happen. This is the qadr. And so the heart doesn't get so intertwined, caught up, with, I wish this and I wish that. I mean, there are some cases of murder, some cases of people going insane. How can this happen? How this, how this, how this? Just, you have to move on. So let it go. So the more we're able to embody that, then inshallah, the more we're able to uh, free our heart from depending on the creation and depending on Allah. And then the last uh, uh, point when it comes to the heart being self-sufficient is, وَخَلَاصُهُ مِنَ الْخُصُومَ is leaving argumentation and what I, what, what I believe is meant by leaving argumentation isn't arguing with other people although it could be that mm -hmm. because when we argue with other people the ego gets involved this is a fact of the matter yeah. people who debate a lot mm -hmm. as scholars have mentioned it hardens their heart why is that the case? because when people debate a lot it really hardens the heart and it becomes an issue of ego so when a person is constantly arguing and bickering people, you know that individual who they, they just have to prove their point? It doesn't matter what it is, they just have to. Okay, yeah, this tastes really good. No, it doesn't. But I think it's good. No, 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 it's not good. I'll tell you why. If you try this place, they're just like that. The heart becomes so, so intertwined with the ego. It's not free. It is imprisoned by the person's own ego and their need to, be, to, to prove themselves right, to prove other people wrong. Uh, but min uh, al what I believe is meant is that uh, when qadr happens, 
we no longer debate like, oh, if only this, if only that. If only I did this, if only I did that. Like the hadith of the Prophet that you know, pursue what you think is beneficial, work hard at it, don't fail, really giving that motivation. But when it doesn't work out, don't say if only this, then this would have happened. Why? Because that opens the door of the shaitan. Mm -hmm. The person becomes so distracted, so obsessed with the past, they become imprisoned by their own past that they no longer can see the future. Mm -hmm. They no longer can uh, keep their hearts focused on that which is beneficial. They become imprisoned by their own uh, regrets. So let's go ahead and uh, stop there. That is the first level of Al-Ghina Al-Ali, which I will continue next time. وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين.